Welcome to the Train Like a King podcast, dedicated to all things paddling, designed to help paddlers of all levels get motivated to get out on the water. Tune in, grab your paddle, and let's train like a king. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Train Like a King episode. Today, the topic is master's degree research. In the last episode, I talked about Tahiti and my frequent trips away while I was at university. So I kind of want to dive into what I was actually doing at university and what I finished up with. I started university doing a sport and leisure studies degree. That took me three years and it was quite broad. Like I said in a previous episode, you know, it gives you an insight into all the different avenues you could go in. However, I was most interested in physiology. So when I got to the opportunity to partake in a master's degree, to give a little bit of context prior to that, I managed to receive a scholarship. So I managed to receive the Sir Edmund Hillary scholarship in my, I want to say, second year of university. And that that scholarship was really, really good because not only did it cover my fees for my university papers, but it would support your sport or your creative arts. And in my case, it was Wakaama. So they provided me with a strength and conditioning coach, mentorship. Um, they had outside classes that helped with university studies. And they did all these amazing things to help, you know, help you succeed. So forever grateful for the Sir Edmund Hillary Scholarship Program. And for anyone going to the University of Waikato, I recommend applying because there's so many different sports in there and you know, I I thought, oh, Wakama is not that well known. Maybe I won't get it, but I did. And there wasn't just one of us. There was a few of few of us Wakama paddlers. So just apply, apply to all the scholarships because it does pay off. And that was a big reason why I continued to do my masters because um, as long as you maintain a certain grade, then you can continue on the program. And I thought, why not? I'll do my master's. So I went on to, um, sorry, I'm going to really work on not saying the word um. (laughs) Let's see if I can not say it again for the rest of this episode. Um, Hang tight, guys. So the title of my master's degree dissertation is The Relationship Between On-Water Performance and Physical Characteristics in Elite and sub-elite outrigger canoe paddlers. So the objective, the aim of the study was to compare and investigate the relationship between 500 meter on-water performance and physical characteristics in elite and sub-elite outrigger canoe paddlers. Basically, you know, this, you can search this, um, you can search this article online. I'll give you the real basic version of what I did without diving too deep into the science terminology. What I did was I took 16 of New Zealand's best paddlers at the, that were available who had already qualified to compete in our New Zealand national sprint championships. I wanted to take some of the best of the best paddlers and one week before the most critical event of the year or one of the most critical events of the year, the national sprint championships, I brought them into a sports sports science lab laboratory and we did a bunch of testing, including VO2 max testing. We did uh, muscular endurance testing, Wingate performance, we did body composition, 
things that we could fit into one weekend because I think I might have said this in a previous video. One of the hardest things is actually getting your participants to to get to get to participate in your study. That's the hardest part. You know, I booked the marae. Uh, I did all these things to 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 get these sixteen paddlers, and I'm f grateful that they actually put their hand up and and committed to to this research. So. Basically, we took all of their measurements um, and we correlated that to their performance at our national sprint championships. So basically, their 500 meter sprint time, their best time, and we correlated that to correlated those two those those um, characteristics with the with their time to determine basically which characteristics were most correlated to performance. And I'm gonna read out the conclusion of this dissertation, dissertation study. VO2 peak and upper limb length were best predictors of performance over the 500 meter sprint distance across the entire group. 30 second wind gate mean power and distance, years of paddling experience and subsequent 500 meter on water performance. Differentiated elite from sub elite paddlers. So basically, VO2 peak and upper limb length uh, had the highest correlation. I really liked that VO2 peak had a high correlation because I didn't want to be biased, but what I kind of wanted to show in the study is although we race over a 500 meter distance, the that distance isn't not isn't necessarily a sprint, you know, even though we call it sprint champs, 500 meter takes us over two minutes, you know, upwards of three minutes in some cases. So it's relatively aerobic. And the fact that a VO2 measurement correlated, you know, had a high correlation to 500 meter performance, it kind of helped to enforce that. Whereas a true sprint, like a true anaerobic sprint, would be 10 seconds, if you think about a 100 meter sprint. And so, although studies, you know, you, you have to take studies with a grain of salt, just because they correlate doesn't mean, you know, there can always be outliers. And, you know, it doesn't mean doesn't mean a lot like that's the thing with research is that you have to take bits and pieces from everywhere and then put them all together and then make a judgment you know so but it was it was just a really cool cool study to do shout out to uh matt driller who was my main uh my main mentor for my dissertation helped me with to get this thing completed uh, it was pretty, pretty awesome to have on my team. Um, so, so yeah, basically if you want to go and have a, have a read of that, that study, it breaks down what we did, um, and dives a bit deeper into our results. Hopefully it, you know, hopefully it, uh, contributes to the wider range of research that's out there. One thing that I did, like one mindset that I had with, before even diving into Wakama as a dissertation topic was I thought there wasn't much research done on outrigger canoeing, but that was just a guess. I hadn't actually looked into it. And then when I finally looked into it, obviously to find references and, you know, gaps in the research where I could focus my research, I actually found a lot of valuable articles out there. One lady in particular completed her full PhD thesis on outrigger canoeing and on females too. And she did, I want to say over eight or nine different studies that focused on technique, comparing stroke rates, like all this 
interesting stuff. So if you are interested in doing your own research, you know, you might be at university at this point in time and you're interested in physiology and things like that. Um, do some research, find those articles, read up on them and then find where you can contribute to as well. Because yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I would love to do it, do some more research. What I would have loved to do with this study in particular is I would have loved to correlate these characteristics to long distance performance. So if I simply got these paddlers to do a 10 K or a 20 K, you know, alongside the 500 meter, then I would be able to correlate those characteristics to the longer distance. And you might, might find that there's different things that correlate. And the other thing I would have liked to do is more measurements in the lab. So things like uh, blood lactate accumulation, because that's a pretty good determining factor of performance. Obviously, when you get to a point where you're you're producing too much lactic acid and and the muscles basically get that burn and you have to stop. So that's that's a pretty good factor to take into account and that would have been good. So that would have been, we would have been able to simp easily do that uh, in the VO2 max test. I think we did a little bit of blood lactate, but it might have just been right at the end rather than monitoring the blood lactate throughout the VO2 max testing so we would have been able to see the we would have been able to predict people's lactate threshold instead we just took a blood lactate sample right at the end to see what their kind of peak lactate was post um post post their testing so yeah that's basically it for this this episode I hope I hope somebody got something out of it and yeah go on and check check it out the I might link I might link it in the description of this episode below if you want to go and have a read and yeah thank you guys for listening stay tuned for the next episode Thank you for listening to another episode on the Train Like a King podcast. Check out trainlikeaking.com for training plans, merchandise, and coaching opportunities. If you haven't already, give us a follow so you don't miss another episode. Catch you on the next one.